Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy chapter 10. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tablets of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me in, into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tablets the words that were in the first tablets, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tablets in mine hand. And he wrote on the tablets, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the, out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. And I turned myself and came down from the mount, and put the tablets in the ark which I had made. And there they be, as the Lord had commanded me, as the Lord commanded me. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth, of the children of Jakan to Mos Mosera, there Aaron died. And there he was buried, and Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his stead. From thence they journeyed unto God, God -go Goda, and from God Goda to Jotbath, a land of rivers of waters. At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Wherefore the, the Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord in his is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stayed in the mount according to the first time, forty days and forty nights, and the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people. And that, and, uh, that they may go in and possess the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give unto them. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of he heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So very, very beautiful chapter here. Really, there's not too much I want to speak about in this chapter. Um, very cool here, of course, is Deuteronomy 10.9. Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. Of course, we know that the Lord loves the Levites, and he, he actually promises them. Um, you know, he gives them the station in, the, in the, the Jewish hierarchy 
where you know the Jewish um, structure where you have the high priest priests and the Levites and that's really beautiful because the Levites do a lot of the manual physical labor tasks and um, you know the, the whole idea of the tithe and things like that uh, that is all associated with the Levites and is really cool um, Yes, in Numbers 18, a tenth of the produce was to be presented to the Levites. And then they give a tenth of that, I believe, to the high priest. So really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Who do they, that, That's actually, who do the Levites give? Okay, so the yeah, they give a tenth to the the priests, a tenth of the tenth, a tenth of the tithe that is given to them. So really cool. And I don't know if this is actually in in modern Judaism. This is just what I've learned so far from you know my time reading the Old Testament. I love this passage here. Um, in Deuteronomy ten sixteen and seventeen. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Next, next passage. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. And then very beautifully says, Love ye therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Hmm. Very interesting, very beautiful passage there. Hmm. Now this is a very beautiful form of Jewish love. This really reminds me of the passage where Lord Jesus Christ um, discusses uh, loving your enemies. Of course, Jesus loved everybody. So being, you know, if we were to apply, Jesus tells the Pharisees, he says, if you were Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. In the same way, if you ask, you know, the idea of Christ, what would Christ do? Christ would love everyone. So I, in that manner, I imagine the Christians are taught to, to love everyone. And again, I don't know. So, um, you know, I, I would say this. I would say, When God says, He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I think it's just very beautiful because God saying, you know, one of my favorite examples is God saying, just because you went through something to, and that was difficult or wrong, doesn't mean you have a right to then do that to somebody else. And slavery is a very painful example of this. Um, for example, the you know um god saying love the strangers i'm not sure if this is any reference to slavery i don't want to discuss slavery let's discuss something a little easier as an example which is the idea of um you know very common theme uh, or common um, idea is a single parent household where there's a mother figure but no father figure and there's a son the idea is mo you know i don't know what the statistics are but stereotypically what happens in these scenarios is stereotypically it's it's somehow a laughing matter or a joke for that son to then grow up and do the same thing to another woman and another son, right? Like he then goes on to have a family with uh, a woman and then he doesn't take care of the son. And that's looked at as acceptable because he went through it. But then you take an example of a son that has gone through that, but instead says, no, I will instead double down and love the idea of being there for his sons. Or his daughter, whatever it is, daughters, whatever it is. Because he wants to be a father figure when he had no father figure. That's the lesson I get from this. You know, as, as, as Lord Naren White, um, I've obviously, um, you know, like anybody else, uh, everyone goes through adversity in this life. You know, in this, in this, here on earth, everyone goes through adversity. And how you, and as, as I describe in the gospel according to Lord Naren White, how you deal with adversity says a lot about who you are. And for me, I know that um, I want to be there for my children as much as possible and to give them every good feeling that was not given to me. So whatever that feeling was, for example, um, 
when I was growing up, my parents made sure I never worried about money. At the same time, it's not like I had the luxury of knowing that I could just sit there forever and not worry about money. That luxury, I, I, I don't believe was there for me in my life. But what my parents did give me is education. And that's that lesson I keep in the gospel according to Lord Nairn, that my parents gave me education. They didn't give me a carte blanche check. They told me you're going to have to go and work. You're going to have to go and earn your own money. You know, did they give me food? Yes. Did they give me books? Yes. Did they give me a chance at college degree? Yes. What they didn't give me was a free check uh, to, you know, to abuse kindness and take it as weakness when it was not. They gave me, a f a f they treated me fairly. And I appreciated that because that's uh, something that I can look forward to as a positive for how I want to do that for my children also. And, and, and then go one step further as I know that my parents would wish for me is, you know, each generation should be better than the last. And of course, here as Lord Nairn, uh, as Lord Nairn White now, um, I know that I want to be able to give my children that feeling of security that, look, if you're feeling a certain way and you don't feel comfortable going to this job or that job, you can stay here. You can preach the, the books. You know, you know, you can preach naringelicism. You can create your own YouTube channel, whatever it is. I want to give them that freedom that as long as they're doing something good for the kingdom of God, they don't need to worry about money. And that starts with this mentality. For ye were a stranger in the land of Egypt, you know? So don't forget, Nan, that your parents did some good for you. So I must do some good for my kids too. And I know how much my father once said something to me. He said, Narayan, I don't know if you'll ever be as loving as me with your kids. And I said, you're right. And that's actually the truth uh, <laughs> that I'm sure if I, when I watch this video, uh, you know, if I watch it like 30 years from now, 40 years from now, that that will be the truth. Because my father really gave me so much love in my life where, you know, even if he had a long day of work, he would come and sit with me on the bed and he would, you know, hold my hand or he'd give me a hug and he'd tell me everything would be all right. And he did so much good for me. And that's, you know, he was just such a loving man. You know, oftentimes in life, um, you know, parents will always tell you, don't worry about taking care of them, take care of yourself, take care of your family. And I find that not only that is that, is that actually what I do in my life, the lion eats first, uh, clean up the beam of that own eye, chill to build your own keep first. It's that it's hard. It's hard because you want to tell your parents how much you love them and how much they meant to you. But actually, it is uh, the best thing you can do for yourself, for, in your, for your parents, is to take care of yourself. And uh, so that's really the lesson I'm going to move forward with is make sure that I love my kids as much as I can and, and just let them know that they have that opportunity to do the same thing for their kids. And that's really what I get from this chapter. The, uh, Moses says, Love ye therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And so I take from that being, look, whatever adversity I went through, or whatever it is, if someone comes and bullies me, right, for example, if someone comes and bullies you, for example, that doesn't give you the right to go bully someone else. And in the same way, the uh, God, God uh, you know, says here, he says, Moses says, he loveth the stranger and giving him food and, food and raiment. Love you, therefore, the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. That being the main idea, that you've got to understand that God loved the Jews even when they were strangers in the land of Egypt. So, that's a really beautiful lesson because it's not like the people are somehow better for being in rich houses or have great crops or no longer worry about starving in the desert surrounded by enemies per se. But, that God loved them at every stage of their journey and that don't take a step back because the people of the past worked very hard. You know, each generation, you know, theoretically worked hard for the next generation and on and on like that. And so with that uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, lesson there, uh, you know, to keep pushing forward, um, I'll go ahead and end the uh, Bible study there for today and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video. Since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I worked at my core. I uploaded and scheduled my core workout video for 8 8 22. I uploaded and scheduled my chest workout video for 8 9 22. I uploaded and scheduled my legs workout video for 8 10 22. 
I uploaded and scheduled my core workout video for 8 11 22. I uploaded and scheduled my daily diet video for 8 6 22 and now I have created and I will upload and schedule this daily diet video for 8 7 22. And with no further achievements since yesterday's daily diet video, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.